Well, let's get on to the rugby. What happened on the field in Cardiff, Goody? Oh, you can say Cardiff. All I know is the Dragons lost to Zebra in the Guinness Pro 14, so it ain't all that great for Wales, is it, I, boys? I didn't see it. I didn't see it. <laughs> um, mate, I mean, you can look at lots of things. Obviously, the big ones are the two refereeing decisions uh, that, that allowed tries, and we might as well start there. So the first one, the crossfield kick, and I kind of feel a bit for Pascal Gauzet because he's got absolutely rinsed on this. Um, this but, isn't like you. What, well, this isn't like you. Well, here's the thing, though. So he, he tells Owen Farrell, he says, Abu with the players. What he doesn't say is, Owen, get everyone in, have a huddle, get the drinks boys in, and literally stop the game. It was You've seen it. How many times have we seen it in, in, in any game where you say, Abu with the players? And he calls time off, and it's literally a 10-second, lads, any more of this, we've got to sort our discipline out. Next one goes to the bin. That's all that needs saying, right? And so he goes time off. And the other argument, and the other thing that I'll say, and I, I tried to show a video on social media of it, Johnny Mamey, old chicken, he's been in the huddle and he's got back to his wing on the other side before Pascal Gauzer says time on. Now, I, I'm not saying it should have been... It, I'm not saying Pascal Gauzer is inexcusable for this. You know, it's a bit of blurred lines around what should and shouldn't have happened. The fact is... I can't remember what coach said it. Was it Pat Lamb that says you either win or you learn? And so England are going to learn. And, and you look at England's performance across the whole, the try in the second half from the quick tap penalty, three or four of the boys just sleeping. You know, Walker Elliott Daly with his back turned, a few of the players not even reacting. So what England will do is react to everything now and you'll see a massive change in that. But they were half asleep, weren't they? And I think that is off the back of... I just blame Saracens. The boys aren't playing. They're, they ain't match fit. They ain't used to playing ruggers. And I thought Billy played very well. They're walking around the field. But no, I'm joking. That's at the throwaway comment. But yeah, I think that first one... I, I just think you broke the code of like decency there. Um, and I'll go with Jono, a call in refereeing. I, regardless of, you know, Owen going back to the team or whatever, it's almost just like... You just think, shit, lad. <laughs> like, why have you... That's what I was thinking. I was like, it didn't I really get, yeah, me, I, I, I get it, that side of the argument as well. But yeah, Johnny I, May, Johnny May's got back to his wing. Yeah, but he probably won't in the huddle. We couldn't be asked. But he was, argument, he was right in there, and he got back out. Yeah, but that's what he does. Then he's in there. It's like a chicken going back into his uh, <laughs> cage. What do they go back at a pen? Yeah. Um, the other argument is, is the water bottles are on, and being a bit of a nausea, mate. It's dangerous if someone lands on a water bottle. Like, who knows where that thing could end up? You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so Jenkins is on. Neil Jenkins is on there. I wonder, if he had the tea in, I wonder if he had the tea in his pocket as oh, well. Oh, he might have done. He would have done. But, but just didn't show it. Because as soon as the tea is on the field, you have to go for goal. Imagine him getting run. Imagine if the ball bounced off the post or, you know, it didn't go out and Billy's got the ball. and He'd kill Neil Jenkins by running over him. It's dangerous. <laughs> so, uh, I just thought, I don't know. You know, maybe there's an argument for the relationship with Owen Farrell and the referees. And uh, I think Owen Farrell, his learning from it is perhaps getting clarity from Pascal Gauzet because Pascal Gauzet just said, speak to your players. It wasn't, I'm going to give you a time off, speak to your players. Owen Farrell, you see a lot of questions, you see a lot of captains then question the referee and say, well, can you hold off time off while I speak to my players? It was just all right. And he walks off, gets them in a huddle. And so, you know, I completely see both sides of the argument. I've seen English people say, well, we shouldn't have been in the huddle with the water carriers. We should, you know, we should have been more reactive. I've seen people say Johnny May got back to his ring on one side. Anthony Watson, you know, didn't. He was half asleep or whatever he was. He was just thinking that that's fine. And tip the slipper to Dan Bigger. He said to Pascal Gauzet, can you let me know when you're putting time on? And he said, yeah, no problem. And it was something like 23 seconds or something, wasn't it? between time off and time on. There was plenty of time, mate, to just get a little message across like that. You, you've been the skipper of one of the most successful teams, you know, that one time that Gloucester got absolutely humped by 50 points down at Irish. Yeah. What would you have done, mate? That day, considering I got red carded for <laughs> basically killing the bloke, David Pace on the pitch. Um, I don't know. I, I genuinely, I look at that. But you look at Martin Johnson, who obviously played in a different era, but yeah. one of the most decorated captains to have ever played the game. And you're going based on, on his point of view. I mean, we can talk about this all day. The big thing about it for me is 
I was thinking this: if Wales win this game, it's taking the shine off Wales winning this game. Two red cards in the first two games for them, and then th- these decisions. And I know there was a tweet that came up on social media: Is Jim going to apologise? Are you? I'm sorry. Well said, James. From, from the bottom of my heart, I um, there's a couple of things. I'm pumped for rugby that Wales aren't on the demise and aren't on for a wooden spoon, and. I'm embarrassed by some of my comments before. I'm happy to say it. <laughs> Which I'm comments? Say it. A, a load of them saying that I think Wales are down and out. Alan Wynne Jones um, isn't the player that he was. I, th- I thought he was brilliant. I don't think he was as good as Marrow, even though Marrow gave away 10 penalties or whatever it was, five <laughs> penalties at the weekend. But And that's what it is, isn't it? We've got an opinion. Not our opinion's not always right. Most of the time it is, but um, <laughs> a lot of the time it's not. And I think from a Welsh perspective and watching. Wayne Pivak's body language from the first week in the Six Nations, and you could visibly see just in his eyes, because that's all we could see, the pressure to the emotion of um, game three against England at the weekend. You can't not be happy for him. And yeah. for whatever reason, spoke about it before, and I, for one, have written Wales off. I don't know why. I've only, only, I've only ever beaten them once, right? When it really, really matters, they rock up. A Lions year, Gatlin's in the crowd wearing his mask. Absolutely loving it. Playing against England. Everyone's thinking England are going to beat them. You know, Alan Wynne-Jones, captain. I've questioned him. Is he good enough? George North. We spoke about him two years ago. I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't think he's that good. He was phenomenal at the weekend. Yeah. And then you add into the mix now, they've got a Lewis Reece summit You know, Josh Adams after COVID gate comes in and plays the way that he's playing. Um, fair, fair play to them. And, and another point that, you know, we can talk about as well, is the back row for Wales as well. Justin Tipperick, and my CEO at Rugby Pass, Neil, mentioned it, and I hadn't thought about it like this. We know he plays well every single week. Doesn't give away a penalty. No. He never gives away penalties in the way that he plays. So I'll go back to my point. From a Welsh perspective, I am sorry. I will never, ever doubt you again until you drop Alan Wynne-Jones and then you're never going to win a game because that guy <laughs> is the informed second row in the, yeah. in the Six Nations. Yeah. Callum has asked us on Instagram, sent in a message, what do you think of the way Owen Farrell spoke to the referee in the aftermath of that first try? That's the problem, I think, unfortunately, for Owen. And this is, goes back to my first point on the relationship that you have with referees. You can hear Owen on the ref mic shouting at the referee, you know, shouting at the players because he's so competitive, right? And he's desperate to win. You see, Johnny Sexton, the same. They're probably very similar. Well, they are very similar in terms of how they interact with the referee, the emotion that they show they can't hide it. You know, Owen's got a lot to work on to be England captain. It's not a case of just being England captain and that's that. And you're the best player or, you know, you're scoring the points or... You're driving the team around. For me, and again, it's easy to sit and judge when you sat at home. Like he's done more in the game than most people. So it's easy to sit at home and judge and say, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. I want to see Owen succeed as England captain. You know, I was watching his dad's clips when he was playing rugby league. There was this thing going around, around fights. And you look at him playing for Ireland. They're rugby to their absolute core. I don't know if there's another family in the Northern Hemisphere that is rugby to the core like them in terms of the decoration that they've had um, across both codes. But Owen's got a lot to work on in terms of how he deals with the referee, that interaction. Empathy in them. Yeah, empathy, you know, and the media stuff as well, yeah. being, the, being the front man for the team. And this goes, I don't want to jump too far ahead, but it goes to, you know, the Lions captain. It's not always the very best player. It's someone that embodies everything. And I think that... Again, it could be COVID, it could be the lockdown situation, it could be the professionals of rugby. There seems to be a disconnection between this England team and fans and, you know, people and, you know, Owen's front in that. And I want to see him come through that and be able to prove people wrong. But clearly, the way that he's speaking to the referees isn't being well-liked. 